Take a seat, Baron. The waiter is about to bring some pork. My special brand. This day deserves to be celebrated because it promises to be historic. Port's fine. A cigar? My own private label. I prefer a hookah. It feels like the Arabian Nights, like one of those mornings in Baghdad when the thieves congregate and before plunging into new adventure swap their life stories. I'm perfectly open to that. Before launching onto the sea of adventure, it's often wise to take your bearings. You first. Where shall I begin? Do you hear my That woman, she's singing La Belle Polonaise, Monsieur. I didn't ask for the program. I told you to get rid of it. As you were saying, Baron. Well, until I turned 50, my life was simple. My deal's limited to selling off the properties I inherited one by one to pay for my mistresses. <laughs> Three years ago, I lost my last farm. Two years ago, I parted with my last mistress. <laughs> and now, all I have left. And now, all I have left is my name. And your name is precisely the name we need on our board of directors. Very flattering. You see, mine has been a very different experience. I came up from the bottom. My mother worked herself to death as a cleaning woman to pay my school fees. I never saw her except bent over scrubbing floors. I am eternally grateful to her, of course, but I must confess I no longer remember her face. Only her real. <laughs> Expelled from school for the fifth and last time, I decided to find out what makes the world go round. I ran errands for an editor, a movie star, a financier, and began to understand a little bit of what life is. Then one day in the metro, I saw a face. One look at that face and I knew. One look at mine and he knew. He gave me the opportunity to earn my first real thousand francs by passing counterfeit money. Another face launched my talent by putting me in charge of a sales team for defective flashlight batteries, and since then, all I have had to do is look out for such faces. Now, here I am, CEO of a dozen corporations, member of 52 boards of directors, and beginning today, the chairman designate on the international conglomerate on which you, sir, have just accepted a seat. Looking for something? Anything you drop. I never drop anything. Oh, so then I guess this hundred franc note isn't yours? Hey, give me that note. Mr. Chairman, as to inquire into the purpose of our company? Not at all. Although it's unusual, you're the first member of the board to be so inquisitive. Forgive me, I won't ask again. You're easily forgiven, since I haven't the slightest idea myself. <laughs> I have an arbitrageur. We're waiting for him. You're promoting a product, a real estate development? My dear Baron, you should know that what a company needs at its inception is not a product, but a brand name. We businessmen have never insulted our shareholders by assuming their investment is a sordid commercial transaction. Rather, they are taking part in a flight of the imagination. We serve only their imaginations, and we never make the mistake of novelists who, once they dreamed up a title, think they have to write the novel as well. Today's brand. Hmm. I don't know yet. If I seem nervous, it's because my inspiration is a bit... I'm constipated today. <laughs> Wait, look, there's a beauty over there. A woman? I've never seen one so promising. Where do you see a woman? A face, one of those faces I was talking about. The man over there on our right drinking water. Promising, he's got all the expression of a street sign. Exactly, one of those signposts pointing the way to human guile, greed, obstinacy. They're planted all along the roads that lead to success, crime, penitentiary, the power. And besides, he's already noticed us and understood. He'll be here in a moment. You're not going to tell him our secrets? My dear Baron, I have never confided in my wife or my daughter. My most intimate friends, my confidential secretaries have never known my secrets, even the most harmless. My chief Steno doesn't know my real address, but my principle is to tell everything to any stranger who crosses my path if he offers me the assurance of a face as lifeless as that one. They have never betrayed me, those twisted lips, those shifty eyes. They are, in our professional circles, guarantees of loyalty, loyalty to our kind. Besides, he's recognized me as, as well, and he will not hesitate to tell me everything. The signs by which members of secret societies and sexual perversions recognize one another are child's play compared to those we use to reveal ourselves to one another. We developers. 
A drabness and a flicker of death on the face. He saw it in mine. He'll be here in a moment. Ah, what is this? Won't they leave us alone? This is a conspiracy. We don't want your envelopes. Take them away. Waiter, what the hell is he saying? Only Irma knows what he means, monsieur. Who's Irma? Irma! Irma the dishwasher, monsieur. There she is now. Get rid of this man, dishwasher, or I'll call the police. What the hell is this rigmarole? <laughs> he says that it was a beautiful morning. Who asked him? <laughs> Until you stuck your face into it. I call the manager! <laughs> Shoelaces? Police! Actually, I do need a shoelace. Baron, do not find nothing from this woman. Red, black, yours are so worn you can't tell the color. Prosperous conditions enable me to afford a full pair. Baron, I have no control over your actions. My only authority is to establish at our first board meeting the amount of your stock options and the eventual grant of a company car. But circumstances compel me to make the modest wish that you will buy nothing from this woman. I could never resist so gracious a request. Sure. But who will buy the poor devil's wares if we don't? She doesn't need your help. An intolerable symbiosis allows that riffraff to get along without us. The shoelace, the shoelace benders sell to the barefoot. The necktie peddlers to the ragamuffins. The hawkers of rubber duckies to construction workers. Hence, the arrogance in their voices, the insolence in their looks. Hence, that revolting independence. Don't encourage them with your patronage. Ah, look, here comes my arbitrageur. Bravo, his face is beaming. For good reason, Mr. Chairman. We won. Listen, we can make a killing. Oh. <laughs> We're listening. Bated breath. Numero uno. Flotation of shares. Certificates issued at par. Par value 100%. I set a share of common stock at 110, the rate of, of a preferred share, which gives me the right to sell it back at 112 so that the quoted price is fixed. And after some manipulated fluctuation at 91 and 1 fifth, vague rumor of war spread by my agents. <laughs> Ergo hysteria in the market. Ergo buyback by us. Classic maneuver. Never fake. Yes. No, any explanation would only confuse you. As for the bond issue, hold on tight. The same thing in reverse. I ensure a normal ride by a temporary fall and make negotiable to the bearer, the untransferable registered securities, by extending a free floating deadline and announcing a fictional split of the actual dividend. Ergo, panic among the investors. Two suicides. One of a general. Ergo, massive buyback by air company. Vague rumor of peace. Ergo, bullish buyback by those shareholders who had to make a completely ruined by my first operation. Marvelous. And how many shares reserved in the windfall for each member of the board? Fifty. I agree. Now, do you think that's enough? All right. Three thousand. I'm beginning to. And the investment stockbroker? The investment stay tuned through my master, from our masterpiece. Through the permit inspector of finances and charge of the public works, I register a collective investment scheme and transfer to the state and cash account the insurance company earmarked to, co to cover the construction workers on the massive sons of dam. The hedge funds, reserves that saves capital, are paid out entirely to the company and the mercantile bank, which returns to us a tenth of the authorized one hundredth. What's left is the untouched reserve, which is supposed to cover the tax on capital gains, but which we will be allowed to claim as operating expenses. Obviously, but there's an obstacle. An obstacle surmounted in a single bound. Through the, through the inspector of finances, currently assigned to the Timber Committee on Textiles, I transferred to late night the reserve at Lavender Cotton, as provided for raw materials by paragraph 11 on finished cloth. God! What an inspiration. Ergo, a Wall Street competitor has, has a fit of epilepsy right on the floor of, of the stock exchange. Ergo, an atmosphere of suspense on the streets. Ergo, worldwide by, by the cartel. Ergo, stampede of small shareholders alerted by AEO telemarketers. There we are, my dear chairman. Our day ends with total buyout of future contracts. They're beating down the doors of our offices. I'm Anu Dave all me, and Anu Dave are done. Love the names of military victories. A receipt, monsieur, if you please. A receipt for what? My life savings, monsieur. Here they are, everything I own. I was listening to you. I know how you operate. I trust you, body and soul. If you really know how you operate, then you know that it's the shareholder who gives us the receipt. Of course. What was I thinking? Here it is, monsieur. My eternal gratitude. Do you hear, mademoiselle, those musicians from home? Is she ever going to shut up? 
And why does she have to keep repeating the same two lines like a parrot? Like a parrot. Like a parrot. Those are the only two lines she knows. <laughs> Impossible to find La Belle Polonaise in the music stores. She's hoping someone will hear her and teach her the rest one of these days. Well, it won't be me. To hell with her. And no, I, my dear sir. Especially since I'm in the same boat, considering the only song I sang as a child. I'm a certain fact, too, in case you're interested. I'm not. Why is it so easy to forget the words of mazurkas, my dear sir? Probably because they melt into that irresistible melody. All I can remember of mine are the first two lines. Maestro. From England to oh. France, I have drunk it with a Red wine and champagne and ready are It's all coming back to me. Red is in the cafe, but I have no way of which our times, fed up with national or patriotic institutions, will tolerate the corporation. <laughs> the prospector does us proud. He offers to plant a, a flag on the field of prospect. Precisely. In Sumatra, I suppose. <laughs> Much closer. The Middle East, it's in fashion. Much closer. Here's a hint. The name spells it out. <sighs> Some people. In Paris. Paris? 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 You've located deposits underneath Paris? Silver! Gold? Texas tea! Black gold. Oil, that is. <laughs> now, what are you looking for? A mother load? A bonanza? Or a name? A name for our shareholders. A bonanza for ourselves. So you weren't just talking through your hat, prospector? The Parisian subsoil conceals millions? I am certain of it. Although, no one knows it yet. Paris is one of the most underprospected sites in the world. Incredible! What is that? My dear Baron, the demons and gnomes who guard underground treasure are furiously active here. And for good reason. When we have stripped our planet of its equilibrium, its natural resources, there is a chance we will careen, not gravitationally, through the highways of the sky. Tough luck. This man has chosen to be not the resident, but the jockey of his globe. He runs the risk of the race. But it makes a prospector's latte a difficult one. I know. Staked out on an ant hill into breeze, flayed alive in the Celebes. Uh, if you say so. Dedication and martyrdom keep pace with this age of the combustion engine. However, our enemy's most effective weapon is still blackmail. In the form of tourist sites and cities, they strew in the world with beauty spots, of which human respect forbids handing over to our exploitations, our spoliations, if you will. For wherever we walk, neither grass nor monuments will ever grow again. They convince retrograde minds that such pitiful human instincts as memory, history, 
human intimacy take precedent over our infertile metals and liquids? They even let children play in the bot spots best suited for strip mining. <laughs> the gold in the rhyme is not so easily protected by its nibblings as the gold in Paris is by its barkeepers. Excellent. Show us where to prospect. Show us where to excavate, prospector. I know an official who can grant us a permit even if it were for the main gallery of the loop. But how can I show you? In this city that's become a storehouse of the past. Wherever you go, at crossroads, on hillsides, in patios of cafes, in gardens, alongside cemeteries, layer upon layer build up, layers of spirituality emitted over centuries by illustrious souls in love and war. I admit, I get lost in it. Whenever I catch a whiff of asphalt, iron, platinum, a stronger scent rises from generations of the dead and the passions of the living, which either diffuses my senses or confuses it. But wherever I go, human potential seems to revel in leading me astray to the detriment of mineral potential. Even here. Even here? In Shio? Baron, you frequent Shio now. Thirty years running with a certain regularity. Have you ever tasted the water? I have postponed that experience. <laughs> a prospector is a taster of water. Water remains the great informant of the Earth's secrets, and even the purest spring cannot help but reveal its bowels. Now, yesterday, at this very table, I shivered at the first sip of the water in my carafe. I had a second, a third, a fifth, and I, I was not mistaken. My taste buds soared with the most heady flavor known to a prospector, that of crude oil. Crude oil and shayo. Good grief. Waiter, quick, a crack and four glasses. This will be my treat, Baron. We shall drink to the banker's trust. Delighted. Apologies. <laughs> the water has become tasteless. The flavor has evaporated even from me. No. Our enemies, the demons, they have stifled us. They have diffused around this cafe an atmosphere of vivacity that has led my senses astray. Don't assume that the sultry air last night, the beauty of the women meant nothing. Through the traffic of all those peddlers around a cafe, it was meant to weaken us, to enervate us, to make us order champagne and short. To return purity to the water. They have turned my drink in a cup of piss. But you have a scheme. A man like you is bound to have a scheme. <gasps> of course I do. May we know it? Yes, and my god, what is that? My bones are my not a lot, Countess, but they were free range chickens. Come back in ten minutes. And my gizzard? I'll try to save it. The customers are eating everything today. Oh. <laughs> well, if they eat my gizzard, save my guts. The tomcat of Kade Tokyo prefers it to your spleen. <laughs> Waiter, move this woman along. I wouldn't do it, Miss Sierra. This is her place. What? She owns this cafe? She's the mad woman of Shio, Miss Sierra. She's mad? Who said she's mad? What's mad about her? You said so yourself, idiot. I did? I told you what people call her. I won't have you insult her. She's the mad woman of Shio. Call the police. So, have you found my boa? No, I did find these three scarves. It's not easy to miss. A boa of purple ostrich plumes, ten feet long. The blue one's very nice. With the white collar on my blouse and the orange flowers on my hat? You must be joking. Give me the yellow one. Does it match? Gorgeous. Oh, waiter! Quick! Call the police! I'm for charges! Against who? Against her! Against you! Against that shoelace peddler! That mad woman! That singer! Calm down, Chairman! Never! These are the real enemies, Baron! The ones we must expel from Paris without a second thought! 
These jumping jacks who all look different in color, size, behavior. What is the only safeguard, the only condition of a truly modern world, a uniform type of worker? Same face, same clothes, same gestures, same speech for every worker. That's the only way that the foreman can be sure that a single human being is sweating and straining. How easy on the eyes, how soothing on the conscience. Yes, of course. But look, look! In this very neighborhood that is our citadel, that holds the largest number of, of billionaires and, and bureaucrats in Paris, there! surges and sneezes under our very noses. These barge pulling, juggling cadge inspectors, these flesh and blood phantoms who embody the freedom of people who don't know songs to sing them, of public speakers to be deaf mute, of trousers to sport holes revealing asses, of flowers to be flowers, of dinner bells to pop out of bosoms. Our power evaporates wherever poverty is cheerful, servants are scornful and uppity, and madness is respected and admired. Just look at that mad woman. The waiter seats her with airs and graces and without her having to order a thing in the best spot on the patio. And the flower girl offers her for free a giant iris which she slips into the holes of her blouse. And Irma can't get there fast enough. Imagine the scandal I'd create, chairman of the board though I am, if I were to stick a gladiolus in my buttonhole and started shouting out loud on this respectable street. My bones and my gizzard, Irma. Calm down, chairman. It's on me. I saw myself during this for two days. Here's my scheme. Not so loud. She's looking at us. True, true. You know what a bomb is, Chairman. I've been told it's an explosive. Do you know who <laughs> lives? Do you know who lives the pavilla at the corner of the keg? I haven't had the pleasure. My adversary. My only adversary. The engineer who for 20 years has refused me a permit to prospect in Paris. The only man I have found in this vile world impervious to our arguments. We're all ears. Lord, what does this one want now? Only your health, monsieur, or rather the health of your feet. As the feet go, so goes the man. Medical officer Shadan, maybe retire. Specialist in Gabon on flea and tick removal, these days cutting off cords and calluses. In case of an emergency, my trouble waiter will give you my dress. In case of an immediate operation, here I am at this table. How's that gold leather getting low, Michael? Still full of stones, Doctor. They rattle like anything. Ah, crepitless crevice. The sound of the rattlesnake, that's the correct diagnosis. A pronoun? My pronoun. My pronoun, plural. Oh, Countess, that left kidney so full. Fluxual neck mare What flux doesn't sink, you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, let's go somewhere else. No. This is the best spot to watch the show. Besides, it's nearly noon. In five minutes. In five minutes, the villa of our enemy, the engineer, is going to blow up. A young man whom I made an offer he could never refuse is planting small charges of nitroglycerin there as we speak. Dear me, I see your prospect involves the most up-to-date techniques. Ah, bear you be wrong there. Although the technique is extremely popular, it's traditional. Before you abscond with treasure, you always have to slay the dragon gardening. In our line of work, Baron, we pay homage to honest folks by making their honest lives as dangerous as a life of crime. <laughs> it is an axiom among prospectors that dead men, like oil, never sink. Are you sure the explosion can't reach us over here? I'm sure of it. But look, they're watching us. Come, let us pretend to be immersed in discussion. I so look forward to reading Shayo of his riffraff. Indeed. It's it's it is new. Something's wrong. Could grief what could have happened? Is is that? Oh my it's Pierre! You! What have you got there? A drowned man. My first job. I'm the new lifeguard on the Pont de la he, he looks more like he's in slugs. Slugs are dry. Slug is the word. He was climbing over the parapet. I slugged him so he wouldn't pop a fight. Our instructions are clear. Slug the drowning man so he doesn't drag you down into the water. <laughs> <laughs> if he was on dry land... He's the first person I've saved this year. I've only come on duty this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the young idiot is going to turn us in. Where the hell do you put the nitroglycerin? We have to avoid this scandal at all costs, or else it's our corporation that's gonna blow up. Sure, sure. I have an idea. Let's see here. What are you doing? I'm just 
massaging his thorax, breathing out into his pharynx. First tape for the drowned. But he didn't drown. He thinks he drowned. He thinks he drowned? <laughs> but he drowned on dry land. Pretending to help a man drown in water can't help him. Bravo, Prospector, I guess it. He's an idiot. Let's not waste time. But how can I make them work? It's simple. Throw him back into the river. Wait until he's drowned good and proper. Then your techniques will be truly effective. True enough. It's logical. Throw him back at the very point he was climbing over the parapets. That's where the water eddies into whirlpools. And wait a full minute before coming to save him. You know what we're saving unless it's truly dangerous. At a peril to my life, he's a likable fellow, but I have to confess, I don't know how to swim. Ah, uh, you'll learn as you dive in. Did you know how to breathe when you were born? Of course not. Let's go. It's mine duty to inform you that engineer driver Stanford, he not only knew how to inhale and exhale, but also to cough and hiccup. Oh, what is this imbecile on about? So, do I run the risk of drowning? I've never heard of attribute trying swimming. It's You'll say to the bottom of this though. Who has your opinion? You're driving us crazy with this clinical chit chat. Excuse me, excuse me, gentlemen. This clinical chit chat is of great interest to me. We lifeguards are also responsible to assist women who give birth on the street, and anything the professor can teach me on this topic is of vital importance to the neighborhood and to my future. They are insane. At your service, lifeguard. Is it true, doctor, that by some strange fluke, the first one to be born is the younger and won't inherit? Quite right, too. If the <laughs> twins are born on horseback on New Year's Eve, the older one is a full year younger than the younger one. He does his military service a year later. Thrilling, the mysteries of birth, so near yet, so far from the mysteries of life saving. That's also the reason why a queen always gives birth in front of witnesses. <sighs> We're in a madhouse. I'll never escape it. That old woman is looking at us strangely. Look, a crowd is forming. Disappear, chairman. I will lay my hands on the cross when the coast is clear. And now, I come to the question which has bothered me since my teens. Doctor, good looking though I am, and despite the fact that I am 36, I've never fallen in love. Is it true that. Play for, play for, play what's for. the matter? Two women on Avenue Wilson calling for help. Two ladies at once, standing up, lying down, crossways, queens. Hard to tell, quick. Come on, doctor. Come on, wait, just. Ah, uh, yes. The one with the hair lift? I've told you a hundred times, 
Adolphe Berthaud did not have a hair lip. That was just a scratch on the photograph. What are you doing now? Uh, I'm taking down the drowned man's name and date of birth. What good will that do him? Will it keep him from jumping in the river? Put that notebook down and comfort him. I should comfort him? It's the job of civil servants to sing the praises of life to those who try to kill themselves. It's not my job. I'm supposed to sing the praises of life? You behead <laughs> murderers, you knock over pushcarts, you prevent children from riding on walls. It's the job of civil servants to organize life, so it's your job to protect it. A keeper of peace is nothing if he isn't a keeper of life. True enough. Young drowned man. His name's Fabrice. His name's not Fabrice. Call him Fabrice. It's <laughs> noon. At noon, all men are called Fabrice. <laughs> Except Adolphe Berteau. In the age of Adolphe Berteau, fashion required women to change the man in order to change the name. Our age is not so immoral, but it is not your job to talk to me about Adolphe Berteau. It is your job to interest this young man in life. That won't be easy. The front is What's the point in throwing yourself off a bridge? The idea was to land in the river. Luckily for Fabrice, he has logic on his side. Well, I don't see how I can interest him in life if you keep interrupting. I won't interrupt again. <laughs> it's a crime against the state, Monsieur Fabrice. Suicide, I mean. A suicide means one less soldier, one less taxpayer. Are you a tax collector or a lover of life? A lover of life? Yes, there must be something you adore about life. Since you've chosen to be its champion and wear a uniform, you must have joys. Tell him about them. And don't blush. <laughs> I'm not blushing. I have passions. I love to play gin rummy. If the young man finds that appealing when my shift's over, Irma can set up a card uh, Irma can set up a card table in the back room. Gin rummy and a glass of beer. If he has an hour to kill. He has himself to kill. Is that all the police can come up with by way of earthly bliss? Earthly bliss? You mean Therese? Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. You are earning your salary, officer. I defy any young man intent on killing himself to give it up after listening to you. Well, maybe you can do better. Of course I can. He can't be genuinely desperate. A young man who's just fallen in love with a young girl who's just fallen in love with him. It isn't true. How could she love me? She does love you, Fabrice. You can fall in love just by holding hands. Did you ever know the niece of General Pershing? How could he have known her? Lots of people knew her when she was alive. Well, Fabrice, say what? I want to kill myself. You see, you can't attach the young man to life any more than I could. Let's make a bet. I bet one of the buttons aren't a uniform. I can guess why you jumped into the river, Fabrice. No, you can't. It's because that prospector asked you to commit a crime. How did you know? He stole my boa, and now he wants you to kill me. Certainly not. He's not the first, but I'm not easy to kill. <laughs> now I'm saving a drowning man. <laughs> <laughs> You. All who live are lucky, Fabrice. Of course, when you first wake up and choose your hair for the day, take your dentures out of the cup, of course you feel a little out of place in this world. Especially if you've just been dreaming about being a little girl, riding a donkey, and picking strawberries. But all you need to feel in call to life is to find in your mailbox a letter with your schedule for the day. You wrote it to yourself the night before. <laughs> then, once you've washed your face in rose water and powdered it, Put on all your jewels, your brooches, the cameo buttons, and the Persian earrings. Basically, once you've dressed for breakfast and gotten a good look at yourself, then Fabrice, you are strong, you are ship shape, you are ready to face the world. Oh, madame. Oh, madame. The rest is merely pleasure, relaxation, reading the newspaper first. Not the tabloids which spread lies and vulgarity. I read the Galois, the issue of October 7th, 1896. Oh, it's an excellent article. Some scandal, uh, some splendid fashion notes, and the stock press item on the death of Lily Laintree. Oh, poor woman. She used to live by my house. My heart skips a beat every morning. I would lend it to you, but it's in tatters. Is that the issue where Oscar Wilde tells about his fight with a tiger? The very one! Ah, uh, yes, and a, a tiger and an esteem locked in hand-to-hand -hand combat amid the pepper plants. <laughs> and then... And then, once you've taken your Epsom salts, not in water. No matter what they say, it's water that causes flatulence. But in gingerbread. Rain or shine, Shiloh is calling you. Now you have to put on your street clothes. That takes longer, of course. You can't manage it in under an hour without a chambermaid. What with the corset, a corset cover, drawers, and that lights up or button in the back. I took it to Coco Chanel once to have her refit with a zipper. She was very polite, but kind. It would have ruined the silhouette. 
teach his own purveyors, Marshall. And then to pick out a lorgnette and to search in vain for the boa the prospector stole from me. I know he's the one. He wouldn't look me in the eye. And to tie my parasol, since it's lost its class ever since I whacked that cat stalking the pigeon. I ironed my keep that day. Why don't you want that cat that I'm Mexican gave me? It just fits the cavity and it brings good luck. No, thank you, Irma. They say those things sometimes come to life and start crying. I'd be too upset. I found a view of Budapest and Ivory. If it suited you, you could see Buddha as if you were there. Go on, go on, madame, I implore you. What do you do next? So, life interests you now? Go on, what a fool I've been. You see how beautiful it is? Go on, I won't try to kill myself again. What do you do next? I take my walk for Greece. I go and inspect the doings of the wicked people of Shio, the ones who purse their lips, the ones who kick the walls of rooms and secrets, the enemies of animals, the enemies of trees. I watch them on their way to mislead people, heading to the steam baths, the podiatrist, the hairdresser, but they come out lame, dirty, with false beards. To thwart the power of these refugees, I have to cross their paths left and right. It's hard. Crime moves quickly, but I take broad strides. Don't tie my friends. Damn right, Countess. <laughs> That's what life is, Fabrice. You see, it tempts you now. It's marvelous, madame. My button, officer. Oh. And that's only in the morning. In the afternoon, the real fun begins. My god, there he is. <gasps> I've been looking for you, Pierre. I'm comfortable here. It wasn't a request. Come here. Fine, fine. Can you please let go of me, madame? <laughs> No. Let go of me, madame. No! Gracious lady, would you be so, so kind as to let go of this man? All my life I wouldn't be kind to you. Oh, I guess it's fine. Thank you. Oh. Oh, disgusting! Don't move, you! This intruder wants me to let go of your hand. It's his job to obtain it. I'm keeping your hand because I shall need it presently to escort me home. I'm a real crazy cat. <laughs> What do you want? Make this woman let go of this man's hand! Why should she? Why shouldn't she let go of the hand of a man she doesn't know? She doesn't know! And what if he's her son whom she's just recovered who was robbed from his cradle? Her, <laughs> her son or her brother. The Countess is not so old. Oh, thank you. Her son or her uncle. I once knew a family where the niece was 30 and the uncle was two. That's <laughs> enough. That's enough, Rag Picker. He isn't my grandfather. For the last time, officer, make her let go or I'm referring charges. And the deputy is right. What if she read in the young man's palm that he's in danger of death by strangulation if he's to leave the Plaza Lama between noon and two o'clock? Oh. I am forced to take your number, officer. Take it's 2133. Three. If you add the numbers up, it'll get 9. It'll bring good luck. Besides, what am I supposed to do to make the lady let go? Tickle her? Try it, my friend. I'm joking, Countess. You're holding the young man because you want to, right? And he's big enough to leave if he wants to. I'm holding him for many reasons. I'm holding him because I don't want this gentleman to take him away. I'm holding him because it's pleasant to hold him. He's the first man I've ever held, and I'm taking advantage of it. <laughs> I'm holding him because... I believe this is the first time in days that he's felt free. Pierre, I am warning you! I'm holding him because by Irma's hand, she's holding him. And if I were to let go, it would break her heart. Oh, Countess. Move along, you. She's not holding you. You can go. See you this evening, Pierre. Nowhere. We'll sell this. If you don't show up at 8 o'clock, the letter gets sent. Yeah, you better run. Thank you, madame. They're blackmailing you, aren't they? you murder? No. Not even one of them? That's a pity. Next time, you don't think twice. Did you steal? No, certainly not. <laughs> Did you take part in a Black Sabbath? <laughs> I signed a rubber check. Ever since then, they won't leave me alone. What are they up to, those bandits? They speak of destroying Chaillot, if I heard correctly. From top to bottom, and all of Paris. They have a prospecting scheme that will leave the city in ruins. They want to undermine and excavate everything. Their steam shovels are lying in wait. Did they lose something? What are they looking for? They're looking for oil. What are they planning to do with oil? What they always do with oil. Make war, poverty, ugliness, a despoiled world. Exactly! 
actually uh, the opposite of what you can make out of candle wax. Oh. <laughs> oh! Leave them alone. The world is beautiful and happy. That's how God intended it. And no man can do a thing about it. Um, um, what are you sighing about, Marshall? Shall I tell our friends? What are you hiding from me, friends? We're not hiding anything from you, Countess. You're hiding it from yourself. You tell her, Rackpicker. You've worked as a huckster. You know how to talk. Explain it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What? You're scaring me, friends. I'm listening, Ragpicker. Once upon a time, Countess, rags were more beautiful than stock certificates. Man honored what he had deformed. It used to be that I could sell them to high fashion designers. And silver forks, not a week would go by where I wouldn't find one among the oyster shells. And for a wedding gift, all you'd have to buy was a case, and not an expensive one either. I'll give you the address. <laughs> but now, all that objects leave in garbage cans are their excrement. It's just like people. What are you getting at? Excrement that stinks, Countess. Once upon a time, everything that people threw out smelled good. What you call a stench in a garbage can just comes from lumping everything together. Cologne, iodine, sardines, chrysanthemums, it just gets you all confused. But we rag pickers, we never make mistakes. In the winter when we dip our noses into that little mist that rises. I ask you, what are you getting at? Tell her, rag picker, or I'll sing. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> just this, Countess. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. What are you talking about? The world is... There's an invasion. The world is no longer beautiful. The world is no longer happy because of the invasion. What invasion? Countess, you, you live in a dream. In the morning when you've decided that men will be beautiful, a plumber's crack becomes a cherub's cheeks. We, we don't have this ability. For the past 10 years, we've watched them come out of the shadows uglier and uglier, wickeder and wickeder. You mean those four men who drowned Fabrice? Ah, oh, if there were only four. It's an invasion, Countess. Once upon a time, when you traveled through P Paris, the people were like you. They were you. They might be better dressed, or dirty, or happy, or angry, or stingy, or generous, but same as you. You were private, he was a colonel. It was simple, there was equality. But 10 years ago, I saw a man in the street among the pedestrians who had nothing in common with them. He swaggered, but in a funny sort of way, as if he had killed one of my regulars and taken his place. He, he had indeed killed him. Since then, not a day goes by, but one of my regulars disappears and one of these new ones takes his place. What are, they, what are they like? They go bareheaded outdoors and indoors wear their hats on their heads. They talk out of the corners of their mouths. They don't run. They don't hurry. You never see one sweat. They have folds and pouches under their eyes that we don't have. You think that their mortal sins were different from ours. They have women like ours, but more luxurious and up to date. They bought dummies out of shop windows, furs included, and then brought them to light for extra charge. Those are their wives. What do they do? Oh, Countess, they have no trade. When they meet near the stock exchange, they whisper and pass 5,000 franc notes. Once upon a time, groceries, stage plays, seem to sell themselves, seem to introduce themselves. Now, everything eaten, everything seen, wine and shows, has a pimp that plants them on the pavement and does nothing. That's them, my poor Countess. They are their pimps. So? So? Pimps run everything. Pimps ruin everything. Look at the shopkeepers. They don't smile anymore. They only have eyes for the pimps. The butcher depends on the veal pimp, the auto mechanic on the gas pimp, the green grocer on the vegetable pimp. You can't imagine how far this vice has gone. Fish and vegetables are on the game. I'm sure there's a pineapple pimp and a pompano pimp. Ask Marshall. He knows them. There's a pimp for every drink, so everything gets more expensive. When you drink your marti martini, of your 20 sous, two go to the gin pimp and two go to the vermouth pimp. It's gotten countess so that I prefer real pimps. I'd shake their hands. Besides, that's how it should be. Some women are crazy about their pimps. Whereas a veal chop doesn't give a damn about its pimp. Excuse my French, Irma. Hey, never mind you about Irma, you rascal. <laughs> there. I've said it. The Countess knows it all. 
The age of slavery is upon us. We are the last free men. Soon, I'll ha the singer will have to do business with the song pimp and me with the garbage pimp, for it's all over. Is it true what the rag picker says, Fabrice? Even worse, madame. Did you know about this, Irma? I'm the best boy, yes, Countess. You've got to distrust everyone, not believe a word they say. I've stopped taking bets over the phone. And the air itself is no longer what it once was, Countess. If I throw my torches just a little bit higher, they go out. There's an oxygen pimp. And have you noticed that the pigeons don't fly anymore? They can't afford to. They walk. They are imbeciles. <laughs> and so are you. Why didn't you tell me, Irma? What can you do about it, Countess? We shall see. This very evening. What is wrong with you? Moaning and groaning instead of acting. You can live like this? A world in which no one is happy? So from sunrise to sunset, where no one is their own master, are you cowards? For briefs, since all your tormentors are criminals, all you have to do is get rid of them. They are too many, madame. Four of them and ten of us. The sergeant will help. Who, me? Or I'll write to the commissioner to complain. There are hundreds of them, Countess. The deaf mute knows them all. They wanted to hire him. They hired deaf mutes so they won't be betrayed. They fired him, probably because they saw that he wasn't blind. They're all connected like parts of a machine. They collude with one another. They support each other. They're tied together more tightly than mountain climbers by their own. <gasps> all the better. All you have to do is lure them all at once into the same trap. Impossible, Countess. They are suspicious. Our detective squad trips up every time. As soon as you get close to them, they change shape. I step up to the vice president, he turns into a chairman. The chairman into an honorary chairman. The stockbroker into a bond broker. I creep up on the lobbyist, he turns into a congressman. He's right, Countess. <laughs> they have the power, they have the money, and they're greedy for more. Greedy, then they're lost. If they're greedy, they're stupid. Where are bad deals made? Only in the business world. I already have a plan, my friends. By tonight, you will be innocent, Fabrice. And your air will be elastic, juggler. And your beer, liberated, Marshal. To work, everyone! What are you going to do, Countess? Irma, do you have any lamp oil? Yes, pure kerosene in the pantry. I want it impure, in a dirty bottle. Singer, go find Madame Constance. Yes, Tell her to meet me at my house at 2 o'clock. Tell her it's to discuss the universe of the, the happiness of the universe. She'll come a running. Yes, Countess. And make sure she brings Madame Josephine and Madame Gabrielle without fail. Do you know how to get Madame Constance to open her door? After you knock, you have to meow three times. Do you know how to meow? I'm better at barking. Practice meowing on the way. Incidentally, I believe Madame Gabrielle knows La Belle Poulinaise. Remind me to ask her tonight. Ow! Ow! Here you are, Countess. Thank you, Irma. Deaf mute, take a letter. <laughs> Dear Mr. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> Dear Mr. CEO, if you wish to verify the spontaneous outcrop of, of petroleum in Trio, meet me at 21 Rue Trio as fast as you can, without fail, alone or with your partners and colleagues. I'm hereby enclosing a sample of the food so you may judge the quality and consistency on your own. Fabrice, can you sign the prospector's name? Another deception? One forgery wipes out the other. Who just delivered this? The busboy, on his bicycle. And after you've delivered it, go over to the prospector's house and ask him and tell him the CEO wishes to see him at my house at three. Yes, ma'am. But that only takes care of two of them. Didn't the deaf mute say they're all connected like parts of the machine? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> and if one comes, the rest will follow, and we shall have them all. Oh. My busboy, my boa. The one that was stolen? Yes, the one the prospector stole from me. I haven't recovered it, but I did find an ermine collar. Real ermine? As far as you can tell. Bring it here. Fabrice, you shall escort me home. At your service, madame. Splendid. You can't imagine what there is to be done in a room no man has entered for the past 20 years. 
you can untangle the little chain on the blinds and let in a little sunlight. You can remove the frame from the mirror on the dresser oh, to remove the image of that horror that stares at me. You can let the mouse out of its trap. I'm sick of feeding it. There are also a few flies for you to kill. That should occupy your afternoon. Well, it'll be hard going, everyone. So everyone to its post. <gasps> Ooh, thank you, busboy. It's Rabbit. Your arm, Valentine. Valentine? Didn't you hear the one o'clock bell sound? At one, all men are called Valentine. Here's my arm, madame. <laughs> or Valentino. Of course, they aren't the same thing, are they, Irma? The choice is up to them. I detest what is ugly. I adore what is beautiful. I detest what is wicked. I adore what is good. I adore freedom. I detest slavery. To be a dishwasher in Paris may not seem like much, but who has more friends than a dishwasher? Not to mention, I often take over the hat check. I love people, but never have I told a man that I love him. I'll only say that to the one I really do love. Lots of them resent this silence of mine. They take me by the waist. They think I don't notice. They pinch me. They think I don't feel it. They kiss me in the corridors. They think I don't notice. They take me on an evening and make me drink. But I never say it. Before I say I love them, I'd kill myself. Because if they don't like it, they can leave me alone. Because when I say I love you to him, he will know just by looking in my eyes that many have held me and pinched me and kissed me. But never have I said I love you to anyone in the world before. I never. No. I love you. Irma! Coming! in their gloved hand, how pretentious, as if their touch were more agreeable than that of a deer or a calf, especially when they sweat. Please do, put on your boots. My feet are dry, Countess, but thanks all the same. You must have a very poor opinion of most Parisians, Mr. Sewerman. It is into their domain that they throw their leftovers and ref ref refuse. Not I. None of the nastiness that falls down your grave can be blamed on me. I burn my nails. I burn my nail clippings. I scatter my ashes. All that I throw down is flour, and before it's faded. If you saw a lily run down your stream this morning, it was mine. Or perhaps you didn't notice. We notice, Countess. We often find little things that may have been thrown down for our benefit. Little gifts, you might say. One time a toothbrush, another time how to make friends and influence people. <laughs> it all comes in hand. Anyway, thanks for the lily. You will get this iris tomorrow. And now to business. I have two questions to ask you, Mr. Sewerman. At your service, Countess. The first is not related to what's on my mind today. Sheer curiosity. Is it true that you have a king? Oh, Countess, that's just gossip from those who envy us. The things they say. They say that there is a special race of girls who are never surfaced and are reserved <laughs> only for the sewermen. That's completely false. They surface every month. In the orgies and the gondolas and the rats that dance to the sound of the flute. What nonsense! The rats aren't allowed to dance. No, no, no. We are more like a democracy, an aristocracy, as they say, an oligarchy. Since we celebrate Bastille Day, it means we have no king. Mm. No queen either, then? None at all. And as for the slanders of the street cleaners that we give swimming lessons in the sewers. I believe you. But now to my main question, for time is of the essence. Well, maybe on the odd summer day, during a heat wave. I believe you, I believe you. Do you remember when we first found this abandoned basement that you promised to reveal a secret about? <laughs> the secret that opens the wall? Yes. Today, I need it. Only the King of Sewermen knows it. Oh, I thought so. <laughs> I have three words that open everything oh. that can open with the 
word. I just tried them. Nothing doing. Here is the secret, Countess. It will be between us. Nowhere. They must go somewhere. They only go down. I'll go down and check. Don't you dare. The stairs are made so that it's easy to go down, but you cannot come up again. You came back up. I have sworn not to reveal the trick. You could simply shout. You could fire off a cannon. Who could have made such a thing? Paris is old, you know. Paris is very old. Does a chance of... Crude oil happened to run down there by chance. There's only death down there. I would have preferred some oil too. Maybe a vein of gold or emeralds. Are you sure there isn't anything? Not even rats. And how do you close the slab back up again? To open, pull here. To close, push here. And is that saying my open sesame words at the same time? Any harm? It can only help. <laughs> Man. Like that story about the steam laundry, we were supposed to be running day and night in my sewers. Thank you very much. To leave lobby pop, we never work nights. What's the news, Orly? Have they found your dog? Adolf Berto has finally asked for your hand. I knew he would. <laughs> Good afternoon, Constance. Good afternoon, Gabrielle. Thank you for coming. There's no need to shout, Orly. Today is Wednesday. On Wednesdays, I here perfectly. Oh! <laughs> Thursday. Oh dear. Well, I guess I'll make an exception just this once. <laughs> Come in, Dickie. Thought that barking, what a racket. You're about to see the longest bow and handsomest man in Paris. It's nothing to do with my boa, Constance, or with poor Dolph. I've summoned you here today to discuss the fate of the human race. Can't it wait till tomorrow? I was washing my slippers. Quiet, Dickie! It is no joking matter. This is a serious day where we have to make a serious decision which may alter the fate of the world. Which world? The wide? The entertainment? The under? Oh, it is of the utmost urgency. I will tell you when Josephine gets here. Until then, let's have tea. I left Josephine sitting on her park bench on the chalk early day. Impossible to budge her. The poor thing was waiting for President McKinley to come out. Great, Dickie! Oh, that's a shame. She has a first-class brain. So we'll listen to you. What is it, Dickie? You want up on Orly's lap? Go on, jump! Constance, we are very fond of you and very fond of Dickie, but the moment is too serious for such childish nonsense. Childish nonsense? What are you insinuating? I'm referring to Dickie. You know we respect him. Uh, that we contrive to receive and welcome him as if he were still alive. He is a sacred memory which has taken a particular shape in your brain. We respect it, but do not dump him in my lap. When we have the end of the world to discuss, he still has his bed under the dresser. For now, <laughs> listen to me. Is that what you're like, Orly? You're against Dicky too? Constance, I am not in the least against Dicky. I adore Dicky. You know that between us, Dicky is a touching convention, but a convention nevertheless. Besides, you're the one that makes him impossible. When you left and visited your niece last month, he was a, we got along perfectly. Whenever you're not around, he doesn't bark, he doesn't eat. I won't take him in my lap for the world. I'd be glad to take him Constance here. He's perfectly well behaved with me. As if butter wanted to melt in your mouth, Gabrielle, you're too saccharine to be sincere. Someday, I act as if Dickie were here when I left him at home, and you pet and flatter him. All the same. I adore <laughs> animals. If you adored animals, you want to pet them when they aren't here. It's a form of hypocrisy. <laughs> now, Constance, Gabriel has just oh, one. Gabrielle has the right to everything. Gabrielle has the right to invite people to tea with us. People who we know nothing about. People who only exist in her imagination. Don't you think that's a kind of existence? I don't invite them, Constance. They come by themselves. You could introduce us. Now, what? there's no point in you meeting them if you think they're imaginary, is there? Of course it's imaginary. But who likes to have imaginary people staring at one, especially strangers? <laughs> they're really very 
nice, I assure you. May I get a word in? Or is this going to be the same as the argument where Josephine wanted to give her cat shots and as hard as we tried, we couldn't even broach the subject? Let's broach it. Oh, My oh. position is She isn't crying. She is insufferable. Everything will go to rack and ruin because of her. Dry your tears. That's right. Dicky, come to my lap. Come here, Dicky. No, no, it won't go. I'm insufferable. You're cruel. Don't you think I don't know the truth about Dicky? Don't you think I wouldn't prefer him alive and frisky? You have your dolphin. Gabrielle has her canaries. I have nothing but Dicky. Do you think I'd act like an idiot if we're maintaining this figment? We're in a small way to bring him back every once in a while. There's Enough of your nonsense. Irma will take Dickie for a walk. No, no, he won't go. Besides, it's free today, so there. Precisely, I have been privy to a horrible plot. Some bandits are trying to destroy Shio. Uh, is that all? You can lo come live with me in Passy. I never understood why you like Shio at nightfall. It has more bats than any neighborhood in Paris. You can to Passy, please. Just now, the basin of the Bishop's Fountain is filled with bullfrogs. It's delightful. Poor mad things. You are as much danger as I. Saint Sulpice is condemned, and so is Passy. You risk being summarily evicted to roam the streets like a couple of screech owls. Why a couple? You exclude yourself from this comparison. Three, if you insist. I like to see you polite. I don't understand, Orly. Why should men destroy Saint Sulpice when it was men who built it? You poor mad things. Your eyes are no better than your ears. You see, all this time, men who everywhere pretend to be in construction are secretly dedicated to destruction. What they build up like Rotarians, they tear down like barbarians. They destroy countryside by building cities, harbor, <coughs> riverbanks by building harbors. Oh, they take up space and sky with their surveying tools and time with their stopwatches. The business of humanity is nothing more than a universal commitment to demolition. I'm speaking, of course, primarily of the male sex. Oh, really? Oh, really? sex in front of Gabrielle. There are two sexes. Gabrielle is a virgin, Orly. She knows as much as you do. She keeps canaries. <laughs> I think you're very unfair to mankind, Orly. He is tall, he is handsome, and he is loyal. All my friends have told me that he is the soul of affection and nobility at the home. Oh, poor dear. I thought as you did until this morning, but the rag picker has just opened my eyes. Men are simply in the process of turning into snarling beasts. <laughs> it used to be that they would wait the longest when they were the hungriest to attack their soup. The ones who needed to use the toilet the most was the one with the broadest smile. Sorry, Gabrielle. I used to have so much fun keeping them in their room and making them smile for hours on end. <laughs> now, they no longer pretend. Look at them, snuffling their soup like pigs, tearing their meat like tigers, crunching their lettuce like crocodiles. <laughs> Men are simply beasts in disguise. Would you mind it terribly if men turned into beasts? I would be delighted. <laughs> I can only imagine. You look pretty as a rabbit. Why a rabbit? I would say as I am. Men and women are the same species, Constance. We would change with them. What would be the good in that? I really 
really don't see why my husband would turn into a rabbit if he were still alive. Don't you remember his buck teeth? I remember nothing of Octave. The way he'd nibble his celery? I remember nothing of Octave. <laughs> However, I do clearly remember this morning with Mahatma Gandhi. Yes, yes, of course. Let me continue. What do you mean by of course? Did Mahatma Gandhi take me in his arms in the Tuileries <laughs> garden? Uh, Constance, look me in the eyes and tell me, truly, once and for all, did someone tell you that story about Mahatma Gandhi, or did you remember it? How dare you question my memory? What if I told you your pearls are fake? They are! Or rather, they were. <laughs> I'm not asking what they were, but what they are now. Are your pearls real? Yes or no? Everyone knows that, as time goes on, while, one's wear while one wears them, Pearls become real. And isn't it the same with memories? Gabrielle is right. There are still men in this world who are real men. And if you can't see them, leave them to us. <laughs> On the food we would turn on, an ex-senator tips his hat to Gabrielle every day. It's true, he's pushing an empty baby carrot and he tips his hat. <laughs> Let's not waste time. I shall proceed. And I implore Gabrielle not to respond to the advances of her ex-senator with the baby carriage. He's very polite. The polite ones are the most uninhibited. He'll make you wear riding boots and sing filthy songs at the top of his lungs while dancing the can-can around you. You think that's what he has in mind? Of course. Men no longer have manners. I watch them, my friends, at cafe patios. They call for toothpicks and they pick their teeth. I've seen them do it. They pick out beef bits of onion. Politeness in public is a thing of the past. They don't do any harm. Then why do you lock yourself in your room and force your friends to meow to let you open the door? Yeah. Incidentally, yeah. me and Gabrielle make quite the picture yeah. yowling on your doorstep yeah. like a couple yeah. of tomcats. Yeah. 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 You needed to meow together. What would be sufficient? Gabrielle, it's because there are murderers. I don't see what would keep a murderer from meowing. But why are there murderers? Because there are thieves. But why are there thieves? Why is there nothing anymore but thieves? Because money rules the world. There you said it! At last! That's it! Because this is the reign of the golden calf. Surely you don't doubt this, Gabrielle. Nowadays men practically worship the golden calf. It's really horrible. Do the authorities know about it? The authorities do it themselves. No, my friends, we have no one to depend upon but ourselves. If we do not act, humanity is doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your solutions, Constance? I have my solution. You can try it if you'd like. You write the Prime Minister? Why not? He does whatever I tell him. Does he ever write you back? He knows I prefer him not to. It might excite gossip. What do you suggest, Gabrielle? Oh, you know Gabrielle. She'll suggest we consult her voices. Exactly. I'll consult her and we'll meet again tonight. No, no, we don't have enough time. Besides, Gabrielle's voices have never been real voices. How dare you say a thing like that, Orly? Where are your voices coming from nowadays? Still the hot water machines? From my hot water bottle. I prefer that. They no longer chatter, they gurgle. And they're not encouraging at the moment, but yesterday they kept telling me to release my king Nerys. Let's move on a little. Let's Did little. you? I opened the case and it just wouldn't go. I don't call that voices. Inanimate objects speaking? That's normal. It's the same principle as a phonograph record, but it's a far cry from asking that to a, from asking advice from a hot water bottle. No, my friends, we have no one to rely upon but ourselves. Obviously, if you do us the honor of asking our opinions, it's because you've already made up your mind. You guessed it. <laughs> I had to find out who was causing the trouble. This morning, I found out. Who was it? Le you'll see soon enough. I've baited the trap, and soon the rat. <gasps> They're still in their human form. What are you going to do with them? That is the question. Suppose I get all these wicked people gathered together in this room. Do we have the right to eliminate them in one fell swoop? Kill them? To eradicate them from this world. <laughs> Killing them. That's easy. But you need a death that leaves no choices. <laughs> Leave that to me. If you kill them, they're bound to be missed. And then we'll be fine. They find you for every little thing these days. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be missed. It's a pity Josephine isn't here. 
She's second cousin by marriage to Oliver Rundle Holmes. She knows her law books by heart. Mm -hmm. Do you miss a cold when it's gone, or the germs that caused it? When the world feels well again, will it grieve for its illness? Don't you agree, Constance? Just a moment. Are they here or not, Gabrielle? What's the matter now? I am simply asking Gabrielle if her friends are in the room or not. I'm not allowed to tell. They are, I know it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be making faces. What difference does it make to you if her friends are in the room or not? The difference is I won't say another word. I refuse to make so serious a decision involving the death sentence in front of third parties who may or may not exist. Now you're just being rude, Are you mad? There are guests in my house always. They know that they have a place in the universe where they can come when they're feeling lonely and be sure of a welcome. For my part, I'm happy to have them. Well, really, you know very well that- I know very well that right now the entire universe is listening to us and that every word we say, every word we say echoes to the farthest stars. To say otherwise is the sheerest hypocrisy. Then why do you insult me in front of everyone? I'm not mean, I'm shy. I feel timid about giving my opinion in front of such a crowd. <sighs> Furthermore, if I'm so bad and so stupid, why do you invite me in the first place? I'll tell you why, and I'll also tell you why, disagreeable as you are, I give you the biggest pieces of cake and the best honey. It's because, disagreeable as you are, when I see you walk through that door, it's not Dicky I see you walk in with. Don't smile, I assure you it's true. It's with another Constance, who resembles you like a sister, except she is young and beautiful and doesn't show off and sits in the corner and smiles at me tenderly. There's no point in coming the day you come by yourself. Goodbye, don't. No, please, I need her to say. Never. It's too much. Bye. <laughs> Madam Josephine. We're saved. Goodbye, dear friend. You have to tell us some other time about President McKinley's coming out. That's the point. He didn't come out. You'll have to wait quite a while since he was assassinated in 1901. I have plenty of time. <laughs> we must really appreciate your judgment, judgment, Josephine. To overlook your eccentricities and ask your advice. Here is the question in a nutshell. Your relationship with Oliver Wendell Holmes gives you particular advantage in this subject. Suppose you have all the criminals in the world gathered together in this room, and you have the means to make them disappear forever. Do you have the right? Of course. Why not? Bravo! <laughs> People. All those people, that's exactly the point. When you destroy, you have to destroy wholesale. <laughs> all battles operate on this principle. You bring all the enemies together in one place, and you kill them! <laughs> if you had to kill them, one by one, by visiting their homes and their places of business, you get tired and give it up. <laughs> I didn't think that myself, but still, it's a splendid idea. I congratulate you, Arlene. Well, in that case, I agree. Your criminals have had a fair trial, I suppose. A trial? With someone appointed to defend them? Who tries to prove their innocence? Pause unbending on this point. I assure you they're guilty. <laughs> really, anyone accused of the right Even animals! Before the flood, God let no one defend the cause of humanity. The poor man stuttered. You see, you know the result. <laughs> oh. But if they have any idea that you're after them, they'll disappear. Your name on Laura ex officio. Have them speak in their absence. If he doesn't persuade you, Condemn them in absentia. We only have ten minutes, and then they'll be here. Then take the first person you meet to be a lawyer. A defense is like a baptism. It's indispensable, but anyone at all can handle it. Ask her where to bring us somebody. Anybody. The sergeant? He won't do. He's under oath to the state. Oh. Irma, is the rat picker that was talking this morning still up there? He is. Still talking, drowned in everything else. Mm. Bring him down. <clears throat> Isn't it dangerous to have all those rich people descended by a rag picker? Okay. Excellent choice. The best defense lawyer for a murderer is a man who wouldn't kill a fly. The best defender of a thief is a man who wouldn't tell a lie. That's the only way to win an acquittal. But we don't want an acquittal. Justice is on the march. You ask for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, <coughs> all of the usual compliments. <laughs> Mr. Rackpicker! <laughs> Irma has filled you in? Oh, yes, I'm to defend 
the banker, the exploiter. Are you sure you know them well enough to defend them? I know them down to the bottom of their souls. I do go through their garbage every day. And what do you find there? Flowers, mostly. It's true that Richard Dorr flowers. How beautiful. No. But I use them to defend his head, Constance. Are you trying to prejudice the court? Oh no, Countess, no. It doesn't bother you that you're defending these bandits? Let me suggest a gimmick that will simplify everything. Take charge of the proceedings, Josephine. Instead of speaking as the lawyer, let me speak directly as the exploiter. I'll have more power. I'll be more convincing. Certainly not. Very sensible. Motion granted. Have you prepared your case? How rich am I? You decide. Millions. Billions. I've robbed, I've killed. You're certainly capable of it. And I have a wife? <gasps> a mistress? Both. Just give me a moment to get into character. department store, the Crusoe steel mills. Ugh. Money is theft. Money is fraud. I detest it. It turns my stomach. Sure it does. But money loves me. Uh, what? It's damned embarrassing, let me tell you. <laughs> I suppose I must have qualities that money finds attractive. Oh, no. Money does not like good breeding. Yes. Money does not like intelligence. I am an idiot. Money does not like the passionate, for I am self. You don't know. It's a horrible fate, but I'm 
resigned to it. I don't ask for your sympathy. I don't ask for your pity. All I ask for is a little common human understanding. Why do I object? He's trying to play on the emotions of the court. Yeah. The court has no emotion. Oh, the poor are responsible for their poverty. Let them deal with the consequences. But is it the fault of the wealthy that they are rich? Yes. Dry your tears. You are deceiving no one. If you are so ashamed of this money, Mr. Chairman, why do you keep it? I do. I keep it. Yes. yes. You don't give a sou to the deaf mute. Mm -hmm. What lies, what slander, what a disgrace to hear myself accused before this court so elegant and so solemn. Oh, oh, oh. uh, on the contrary, Countess, I spend my days trying to get rid of it. I have yellow shoes, I buy black ones. Yeah. I have a bike, I buy a car. I have a wife, I buy a car. Order! I get up early in the morning to place cash gifts at the bottom of every garbage. I have witnesses, just follow me. And then I go and I order flowers from Java, where they are picked on elephant back. I play a long shot, I win by 20 laps. I buy a lottery ticket with unlucky numbers. Jackpot! How? Money just won't leave me alone. Same goes for my gold as for my precious stones. I throw a diamond in the sand. It comes back to me the next day in the trout my butler served me. Ten diamonds, ten trout. Giving a suit to the deaf mute wouldn't help me get rid of my 40 times 40 million. So where is my cry? He's got a point there. Of course I do, lady, at last. Someone who understands me. Someone who is not only beautiful, but sensitive and intelligent. I object. Overruled. I will buy you flowers as soon as I'm acquitted. What kind do you like best? Roses. I will buy you a veil full every morning for the next five years. My enormous wealth enables me to do so. And amaryllis? My favorite too. I am jotting down the... Oh. I am jotting down the name. Amaryllis. He's a bare-faced liar about those flowers. He detests them. Don't. The proceedings, he tests them as a rat figure. He loves them as an exploiter. All right, I'm just letting you know what he's like. Mm -hmm. Yes, the lady is wise. I could give a franc for the deaf mute, 20 francs, 20 million francs. It wouldn't put a dent in the 40 times 40 million I am afflicted with. <laughs> right, little lady. Right. <laughs> Anyways, the poor understand this very well. This morning I took a hundred francs from a rag picker who found them under my table, and he let me do it because he understood. Because he's a big dog. <laughs> Don't speak ill of rag pickers, please. I'm not here to defend them. But if you only knew about the wealth of generous imagination. You smell from here, madame. <laughs> Stock, it soars like an eagle. You buy a stock, it plummets like so. I buy 33. It goes up to a thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. It is what I use to buy my chateau in Chanel. So my rose garden in Picardy. Your dunghill? Yeah. yeah. I use to subsidize the rich hotel where I keep my dozen chorus girls. Oh, I hope they all cheat on you. Yeah. yeah. Cheat on me with a dozen chorus boys, the managerial staff, the French one, the skinny chance. I own them body and soul. It'd be as if they were cheating on me with myself. Oh, disgusting! I hope you didn't hear any of that, Gabriel. What? <laughs> I have all the women present company excluded. The skinny ones with caviar, the fat ones with pearls. I Resistance with rubies. My touch is jeweled. My smile, a motor car. What woman could resist me? I lift my little finger, they fall like leaves on them. You bastard! <laughs> All the women, no exception. That's going a little too far. This is what comes of money, Gabrielle. Now you see. <laughs> 
What are you complaining about? It's only the truth. When you don't have money, nobody trusts you, nobody believes you, nobody likes you. Because to have money is to be virtuous, honest, beautiful, and witty. And to be without is to be boring, stupid, ugly, and useless. Hey, that is quite enough. You have to mention the oil. What do you plan to do if you find oil in Shio? Oh, Countess. Privilege guaranteed by the Constitution. Oh, 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 oh. Court, the trial is over. And the verdict. Yay! I have full authority to carry out the sentence. Yes! I can destroy them. Yes! I can remove them from this world. One minute. Yeah. Speech, like when I used to sell the Miracle Spot Remover. Oh. <laughs> Not at all. You did very well. Except for you. I predict a brilliant future for you. Goodbye, Marley. Hello, little mouth nicely. I'll take little Gabrielle home. I'm going to walk along the river. There you are, Dicky, and with the bloody ear. Have you been fighting again? Probably with the Great Dane. Could you please walk her home, Mr. Ragpicker? She loses things in the strangest of places. Her prayer book at the marker, her corset at the church. <laughs> Permit me, madam. Countess, my mazurka, since Madame Gabrielle is here. Oh, you're right. Madame Gabrielle, wait. Well, begin. Because you are beautiful, witty, and diaphanous, and then as soon as they get the chance, 
they leave you for someone who was dull, ugly, and I'll take it. <laughs> 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 You're still young and firm, your hands. You're the only part that stayed faithful to me. The rest is quite decrepit. I understand why only care or hope for you when my eyes are closed. And you're right to do so. Yes, I've grown old. Not I. You've grown old like all those who deny their memories, who trample over their tracks. Dear Orly, forgive me. I will not forgive you. We took her jet everywhere we'd been together. I promise you. No promises. You bought her the same flowers. You bought her the same chocolates and washes. And there's nothing left, is there? I kept all the chocolates. I still have a dozen flowers. I will never forgive you. I love you, Orly. Love? Past hints? Are you dead? I love you, Orly. That's just what I thought. That's what consoled me when you left. He is in Georgette's arms now, but he loves me. He goes to the opera with Georgette, but he loves me. But you do not love me. You can never get rid of her, for you do not love her. And that is your punishment. Don't forget me. Love me. And now, goodbye. Hand my hands to little Pierre. You know what you want to know now. I helped Pierre yesterday. It's his turn now. Get out. Oh, Pierre! Yes, madame. Oh! <laughs> ah, he's gone. Did you see him leave? Yes, madame. Oh, I didn't even hear him go. Just like him to make a quick exit. Heavens, my boa! I found it in your mirror dresser, madame. With a little Mo plus shopping bag? Yes, madame. And a little sewing box? No, madame. They're afraid, Pierre. They're quaking in fear. They're trying to return everything they stole from me. They're trying to appease me, but they don't know how to set about it. My most cherished possession is a little sewing box, which they stole when I was a child. It isn't in the dresser, madame. And no guilt thimble? They've kept it, too. Oh, splendid. I have no obligation to be merciful. Put on my bow, Pierre. <laughs> They'll think they're seeing a real bow and stricter. And they are, Countess. They're coming to see a black box of them. Yeah. I have nothing to fear. You put your patrolling under the crap? Yes, and I'll tell them you're deaf as you ask me. Thank you. Your cigars, Chairman. Do any of you have a gilt thimble by chance? Not I. Or a little sewing box? Wait your turn, Chairman. Not us. The die is cast. Move along. Watch your step. Contractors of the development companies. The rarest kind of petroleum. How was it discovered? Pumping? Drilling? With a finger! <laughs> Sign here, please. Oh, what is it? Our contract to share stock options with you. What is it? 
The cult will lock her up. The asylum has been alerted. We'll call an ambulance as soon as we're out of here. Is that well? That's the well. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Too much so. I'm dining with Roland tonight. She hates that smell. Let's not linger. Are you sure? Lucia told Mimi she was dining with Roland. I'm dining with Roland and Mimi. If you want to bring Lucia and let Lulu know. You might have told us sooner. I'm dining with Janine, who's bringing Mado. Manouche is dining at Paula. <laughs> Janine is having drinks with Yvette. All you have to do is call him Mon and have Regina call her. <laughs> <laughs> Madame, when can we visit the reservoir? Right away! Is it so urgent, friends? It's past three. And for late, Miss Elgo's having tea at the risk with Georgette. You know her, she'll never forgive me. Georgette, poor Adolf. We have the Energy Commission at six. We have to decide on our initial investment, but the nation comes first. Madame, could we get your signature on this without going down? Certainly not. Then let's go down. It'll only take a minute, as Mimi says. <laughs> Will a minute be enough, Madame? Flowers, gentlemen? I'll take all your flowers. Your name, pretty child? My name's Sabella. Oh, what a pretty name. Friends, the bee is treating us to flowers. <laughs> 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 Lucky her. Otherwise, she'd be hearing how the word bitch is conjugated in all its tenses. I lay at your feet the most sincere homage, madame. What a face, my daunting hell. May I express my deepest and most potent admiration, madame? <laughs> she won the Oscar for best performance by a witch. I rapturously kiss your divine hand, adorable creature. <laughs> so, are we agreed? We charge this old bat the going rate of 30%? 40. She's completely seen our boss. 60. All right, 75. Here is an advertising contract, dear lady, with terms more favorable than ever before. Perfect! That's the way to the well! Oh, we do not care about the tour. Whether your reservoir is real or fake, it's our job to describe it with the same enthusiasm. Then I won't sign! Keep calm, keep calm. We'll take the tour. But if you insist on rubbing our noses in this oil, we'll have to raise our prices 30%. It's worth it. <laughs> have their resident nymph. We can use that somewhere. That's copy. Hey, <laughs> hey, we can't go invited. Let them in, Irma. And you need to tell them I'm deaf. <laughs> you see, Felix was hiding it all from us, but I caught wind of the crude oil from Raymond. He hadn't a clue I was talking to Jimmy on the minister's phone. As for the minister, he works agreed to 6,000 shares. Kiki's office agrees. If we want to let Bob know, we'll have to hustle after we see Ivan. And Paul can't get into Raul anymore, and Ivan's broad-minded, broader than Jaco. By the way, he's renewing our options on Toto's Wheat Futures. Nothing for Francois in that case. Bleed can handle it, and you know Gustave. Is that the well, madame? That's the well! Cigarettes, ladies, mine the petroleum. Imagine us with <laughs> and there we have it. The world is saved. Excuse me, excuse me. Who are you? Just a minute, a minute. This is my only chance. Thank you, Madame. The pins are flying again. 
don't have to walk anymore. Oh. And green grass is sprouting from the pavement. And not a single pimp! The fishmonger said hi to me today! <laughs> now, Juggler, you can throw your fireballs as high as you please. They won't go out! Thank you. And on the street, strangers are hugging one another. They don't know why. And offering each other almond bars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Countess, Thank you. Thank you, Countess. Thank you, Countess. 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 Countess, we thank you. We are the friends of animals. We are the friends of people. We are the friends of friendship. You have freed us. From now on, there'll be no more hungry cats. Countess, we thank you. We are the friends of flowers. From now on, every plant in Paris will be watered. And the sewers will be fragrant with jasmine. <laughs> Just as Irma says, love is the desire to be loved. Sadness departs upon the winds of time, and out of the heart of darkness comes the light. It is for you alone, Countess, that we have returned. We, we are the adult bare toes of this world. We are no longer timid. We are no longer weak. Never again shall we run from what we love. Never again shall we follow what we hate. We will be handsome with celluloid cups. We bring you this melon, Countess, and come to ask for your hand. Too late. Too late. Too late. What's wrong? What's the matter, madame? Too late for what, Countess? You oh, might have said something. May 24th. The most beautiful Easter in the memory of man. Or September 5th, 1890, when he caught and grilled that trout by the way of St. George's. Or even worst of all, August 21st. 1897, the day the Tsar visited Paris, and yet he did nothing and said nothing. So I tell you, it's too late. Kiss each other, you two, this very instant. You mean? You want us to kiss? You've known each other for three hours, and you're in love. Kiss each other before it's too late. Madam. Look at him, hesitating, hesitating in the face of happiness, like all his sex. Kiss him, Irma. If two creatures in love let a minute warm its way between them, it'll turn into months, years, centuries. Make them kiss the rest of you, or in an hour she'll be the mad woman of Alma and he'll grow a white beard. Come on, here. All right, uh, this one. No, 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 no. Not happening. Breakfast? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You do this, right? Let's go. Oh. You got this. Let's go. Beautiful. <laughs> was a sensible woman for the world's madness to break its fangs on. But next time, don't wait until things look black, Rag Peter. The second you see anything, tell me. The second one of those plug uglies shows his kisser. <laughs> You'll know. Enough time wasted. You have my bones and my gizzard, Irma? They're ready, Countess. Oh. Then let's go and go back into the light. Let us turn our attention to serious matters, my children. There's nothing but human beings down here. Let's go and give our attention to the creatures who truly deserve it. <laughs>